Hello. Today I'm looking at the food stuffs I've moved to uh, since I've been on a keto diet. Um, started a keto diet about 18 months ago, and what food I'm now eating and my taste in food has changed in that time. And because there always seems to be lots of queries from people saying, I've got on the keto diet and I don't know what to eat, blah, 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 blah. So here's just a quick run through to give you some ideas if you're new to the keto diet of what you can eat. It's not exhaustive, but it's just what I've, the routine I've settled into for what I'm eating. So reading from left to right, there's seeds and nuts. So what I do, I make up my own, uh, what's the word, mix if you like. So the carb heavy nuts I tend to have less of and the carb light nuts or seeds I tend to have more of. So actually do I actually go to a wholesalers and buy off the shelf all that once every six months. But what I get is um, one of these huge bags. So well not one but of each variety. So the sunflower kernels, almonds, whatever, whatever. And if you look on the label, now this is where you need good eyesight because they can't make quite tiny. So carbohydrate almonds is 14. I think mm, that's a bit high, so I won't use too many of them. Prefer seeds. So go to the sunflower kernel and look at what's on that one. And Carbohydrates, 18, so that's even higher. So, yeah, that's a bit of a one to watch. Now, I'm using the term carbohydrates as on the sort of European standard, which excludes uh, roughage, I think it is, that the word for it. Whereas the American standard is to include the roughage element, and it occurs as, a, as a, another line in the... Uh, nutrition ingredient, ingredients. So I think the American is it will be carbohydrates 20, um, what's it, roughage, what do they call it? Um, six. So the net uh, carbs is 14. So just be aware when you're reading on the internet about how many carbs it's got, what system are you using? So just to, get, just to keep on with the, with the seeds and nuts for a moment. I actually got a list on my fridge, so I'll swing around to my fridge. So when I'm doing my top up, there's the list I go from. Uh, if that's clear, and I've actually put in the right hand side uh, carbs per 100 gram. So I've got a choice of um, walnuts, sunflower seeds, Brazil nuts, hazelnuts, pecans, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, flax, and almonds. So that's what I go and top up with when I need it. Right, continuing the stroll through what we've got. Just tucked in behind there are the eggs. So I'll try and get free range if there is such a thing. And again, there's another di difference between uh, where I am in New Zealand and the States. In that here, eggs can be kept out of the fridge because they're not washed. Whereas in the USA, it's mandated they have to be washed before being sold. And apparently washing it takes off a very thin outside membrane which stops any bacterial penetration. So yeah, if you're in the States, put them in the fridge. If you're not in the States, like I am in New Zealand, you don't have to bother putting it in the fridge. You've only got about three or four weeks life uh, and they'll, they'll be okay. Moving to the right, we'll go back to front or front to back. I'll go front to back. So here we've got um, beef bone broth. Now this is quite pricey, so a packet like this, um, which is 28 bucks, New Zealand. So, ouch. But it, it is quite, um, goes quite a long way, because they only need a couple of teaspoons for a tundra or a cup of the bone broth. Now I did used to make my own, but with this um, sitting on the stove for 48 hours, it can really pump out moisture into the atmosphere and 
can make the house pretty stinky, so uh, I don't eat it often, but when I'm doing an intermittent fast of more than 24 hours, I usually have a cup of bone broth. Now here's, here's the, all the good details down there. So it does actually say servings, approximate servings 33, so I'm getting about a dollar per serving. And to be frank, I can't taste the difference between using this and making my own. And there we go. Behind that I've got um, dark cocoa, uh, as a mixer and I say sugar free, but it's got xylitol in it, I think. Drinking chocolate, uh, peppermint flavour. Now I use these for doing uh, for making uh, fat bombs and making ice cream. So, and I'll do some videos on that. So here we've got carbohydrates, 4.2 per hundred. Oops, there we go, 4.2 per hundred. And this one is... Does it say? Does it say? Does it say? It must say somewhere. Oh yeah, there we go. So this one is, let's see, 100 gram carbs, 15. So it's high-ish. Um, but again, you're talking about using a teaspoonful, tablespoonful. Now behind this is a probably the backbone of my diet, coconut oil. So everything that I fry or cook is going to be with coconut oil. And also making is it bomb fruit, bomb proof coffee, what they call it, tea or dessert spoon of coconut oil makes it go down well. Now I've used I use coconut oil because from what I've read, this is high in medium chain triglycerides. So there's long chain, short chain, and medium chain, and the medium chain triglycerides can be directly absorbed. Whereas the long chain and the short chain aren't directly absorbed, but go into the gut, enter the lymphatic system, oops, excuse me, go into the lymphatic system, and then once they've been the tick, they're okay to ingest, they are then absorbed. So that's that's the the coconut oil is a quick hit, if you know. Um, and this and the product we've got here is really cool because you actually key in the batch number on the top on the people's website and it'll tell you which Pacific Island it came from. That's quite cool. Right? Um, and it's all oh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, tin stuff, so I've got pink salmon, uh, wild sardines, yeah but they're pretty wild getting, getting caught. Um, come that bit. Psyllium husk I use this for making keto bread, and I'll go and I'll do the recipe. Uh, then there's salt. So I was using this one, Himalayan salt, but I was reading somewhere, and this is quite interesting, that when we die, when we have salt in our mouths for the taste sensation, the only thing we're tasting is the outside of the salt. So if we've got large lumps, we don't taste the inside bit, but we're still ingesting it. So you can, in fact, be taking in a lot more salt than you really want to. And you find you feel thirsty and it puts the body out of whack. So I've gotten back to using just a normal table salt, it's so called. But again, this in New Zealand is, in fact, sea salt. So on the South Island, there's huge, great big salt pans. Uh, sort of, they open them up at high tide and seal up the pan and let the moisture evaporate under the sun. And then they just scrape off the salt. But it's also got added iodine because we are short of iodine in New Zealand naturally. And again, you need the iodine to release selenium, sel selenium, which is good for brain health, from what I gather. Um, coconut cream, again, that's part of the ice cream mix. Apple cider vinegar, I use that for the bread. Guar gum, quite because of thickener. 
but I I thought I stopped using that really because it's a pain in the backside because it goes uh, lumpy very very quickly for clocks or whatever so I tend to just whatever I'm using as a gravy just turn the heat up and drive more water off it um, as a flavouring mustard I find that's quite handy so I don't know if that's got oh, it's got the ingredients on the back here but carbohydrates that's 10 hmm right similarly I do quite like the chicken Maggie chicken so that's quite mild but I'll put it in with um, mincemeat and stuff like that and again not going mad on the quantities but the carbs is it's saying here 0.9 gram per 100 ml diluted so a tablespoon sorry a teaspoon per 250 gram not be too bad uh, tomatoes now if you can get hold of these whole peeled Italian tomatoes They've got really thick juice, which is brilliant for adding into stocks, um, making a, something in a stock pot. And again, we'll look at the carbs on that. And that's per 100 gram uh, is 3.5, I'm reading it correctly. Yeah. So, okay, and the word to use, I said roughage before, it's that like fibre. Right, as for drinks. Um, I stopped drinking tea because I don't. I like it with milk, not without milk, and I can't have milk. So I switched to um, just an infusion. So it's just a sort of tea bag full of. In fact, in this case, peppermint, licorice, and vanilla, and that tastes really nice. Again, coffee, plunger coffee. No, I'm doing that. Moving forward, oh, there's another salt here I've got, which is um, low salt less sodium. So when I first started in keto, from about week three or four to about week ten, I sort of getting terrible leg cramps and shooting at the bed in the middle of the night. So I did up my, I think, um, salt intake without necessarily increasing the sodium intake just to try and cope with the cramp pains. Now that's no, I've not been cramped up for a year or more now, so that tends to be at the back of the shelf. Uh, as for vitamins, um, I've got vitamin C, which I occasionally take, I can't say all the time. And uh, vitamin D, which again is recommended if you're not um, out and about, say during the winter. And you can't go past the alcohol. Now if it's a real spirit, there's very little carbs in those, so I have got brandy. And that also goes in my ice cream. Uh, scotch. Oh, two, two different sorts of scotch. So that's about it outside. Oh, and one thing that I've rediscovered recently, which I used to love as a kid, was licorice root, which is there. And it's basically is a stick of wood. And you just break off, say, that much. And then... Uh, have it in, and put it in your mouth and you just sort of chew on it and after about five minutes or so it goes soft and it extracts the licorice taste and then you just sort of chew on it, suck on it for about 10 or 15 minutes until the taste is gone. So that's quite a bit of a lifesaver when uh, you want to do it with fridge browsing <laughs> and uh, yeah when you're keto there's not a lot of browsing to be browsed so um, or grazing, isn't it grazing? Food grazing. So I just pop a little bit of that in my mouth and that keeps me happy. Right, well I think that's all the stuff that's out of the fridge. So I'll go to the fridge again. And here I'll first of all pick up on the veggies. So again I've made a list that just sticks on the fridge door about what veggies I can have. Again, it's not an exhaustive list, but it's the one that might sort of rotate. And um, you probably can't read, it's gone a bit faint in the sunlight. But um, what have we got? So, what you can have without being too guilty. Uh, spinach, which is really cool. 
celery, which I don't have all that much. Carrot, that's a bit carby. Cabbage is also a bit carby. Daikon or daikon. Uh, don't know what it is. Look it up. Well, there's some in the fridge. I'll show you. So D I A K O N. Cauliflower again, a little bit carby. Broccoli, bok choy, and that's really nice as well. And that tastes, I suppose. The only thing I can sort of say the equivalent uh, with uh, texture and taste is probably asparagus. But uh, rhubarb, yeah, I'm to the rhubarb. That's good. Spring onions, leeks. Um, alfalfa, crest shoots, tomatoes, and again, I'm not too keen on tomatoes because they're quite high in carbs. Mushrooms, yeah, if you can get hold of the portobello mushrooms, they freeze well. So we've got a mushroom factory nearby and buy, say, a couple of kilos and uh, freeze up quite a bit. Strawberries, um, oh, and also at the moment, because they're in season, blueberries I'm eating. Garlic. Uh, ginger, kale, oh ginger of course I'm just talking about the ginger root and uh, lettuce and I suppose there's a few left out, zucchini as well I suppose but I haven't, haven't, haven't tried that recently. Right, so what's in the fridge? Open the door, okay, hello, right, so in the fridge, in the fridge, what have we got? Uh, I've actually switched the fridge off so the light's not on so I'll switch it on and hopefully it won't be too noisy for you. Right, top shelf, uh, I've got linseed, ground LSA, and linseeds. So, what I've got three, I've no idea, but... So, the, the, they're in the fridge because the linseed deteriorates in sunlight, apparently. So, I'll keep anything linseed-based in the fridge. Now, the linseed goes in my seed and nut mix, the ground LSA goes in my uh, keto bread and the ground linseed I use instead of um, breadcrumbs when I'm doing um, kidneys or liver. There's uh, organic crushed garlic. Now I've gone for that one for convenience really. So, you know if you're crushing up garlic all the time I'd I can just take a teaspoon and bung it in with whatever I'm cooking. Moving to the right. So I've got some crushed ginger. So again, I was, I was using this to make drinks in the early days. So coconut milk and uh, crushed ginger. But I've stopped doing that. Um, beer. So the beer I can drink is the Spate Summit Ultra Low Carb, and it, it's a really nice beer. It's a really sort of, uh, yeah, it's a lager beer, so it's very light. And look at the label at the back, and try and pick up on the carbs if I can find it. So it's about 0.5 grams per hundred mil. So that's nothing. No, so that's cool. I'm also a bit of a peanut fancier, so not in the seed and nut mix because they overpower it. But um, I use this one, which is chia seeds and flax seeds peanut butter, and I use that to make uh, fat bombs and uh, 40 thieves peanut butter crunchy blah 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 is my indulgence when I want to have something out the fridge. So where's the Oh, here we go. Carbohydrates, so that's 10, 10 grams per 100 ml. Now, uh, so 10 grams per 100 grams. Now, I actually had an email discussion with these guys because I bought another one of these off the same shelf and it gone to 14 grams. But what? And they just said, well, where, it's where they source it from and they have to go from what the people they source it from says. So it can vary. It does pay for you pick up some of these things off the shelf, check what the carbs in, in. Don't think, oh, it's always going to be eight or nine or ten, because there can be some nasties if they've decided to add sugar or something just like that. Next shelf down is, oh look, homemade pork crackling. Yum yum. So that's my indulgence as well. 
So if you're having a supermarket and you see pork skin, grab it. Now it catches a bit of, again a bit of a smelly process making that, but um, certainly a damn sight cheaper than buying in bags. Now before I showed you the tomatoes I, I buy, so that's the, that's just that's some juice left there. So she's quite thick, and that can go into stews and such like. And then onto my favourites is cheese. So I'm actually my favourite at the moment is the Veldhusen Marsdam from Keenholm. So I've got a couple of blocks of that to last me for a while. And just to be on, just to carry on the cheese conversation, uh, that's the sort of the, the daily cheese, which is some cheddar cheese because that's cheap as chips. There's also some Tejoro Swiss cheese. I'm just going down the door while I'm here. Uh, right, what we've we got here. So we've got um, olives. Now they taste absolutely brilliant if you're doing a pot roast with chicken thighs. Recommend. Um, what have we got here? The label's dropped off. That's Tabasco sauce. And, um, oops, sorry, out of focus. Uh, that's tobacco, Tabasco sauce, and I use that when I'm having kidneys. So I have what's called devil kidneys. So that sort of brings the taste a little bit. Obviously, cream, yes, can't go bad. And then plain unsweetened yogurt. So that's got a cool one. So lots of carbs on that. Oops. So just make sure it is unsweetened. So look at the carbs on that one, and we've got 3.9 per hundred, so that's cool. And make it keep, I just put a peg on it, top of it, keep the ear in it. So that's, you know, that's going to last me a week. Oh yeah, sorry, that's another thing. Do check your use-by dates on what you're buying. So this is um, 5th of April, so I've got another week or so. Um, yeah, so sometimes the stock rotation in stores isn't what it should be. Uh, now I use American mustard, which is um, just on the side of the plate, so it can lift the taste a bit. And that's a carbs 15, so you can read that on there. But I have, what, a teaspoon, I suppose, so that's not going to be any harm. And uh, above that I've got the mayonnaise. Ooh, come on, drift again. And again, I, I, I don't really do salads, I don't know why. Um, so the mayonnaise is bought probably in error. So if I move up a bit again, so I've got on the next shelf down. So I've just done a pork roast. So that's ready to be carved up and fridged. So yeah, uh, things like pork roasts and beef roasts, I've never really done them before, mainly because it makes the oven dirty. But if, if, if you um, think, oh gosh, that's quite a price, but if, if I get a beef roast for say 18 bucks, I can usually get about eight meals out of it. So, um, so what's that? Eight divided by eight, 18 divided by eight, divided by eight, divided by eight. yeah, you're talking about you know, two bucks a meal, so it's not too bad. And of course you also get the goodies coming off the roast, so I did this yesterday, so that's going to be here. So I've got the pork fat that I can use for in the fry pan, and then the, the nice, um, what do they call that stuff? The, the, thick, <laughs> the thick gravy bits you want. And also another leftover from a pot roast I did three or four days ago, and that can go into making um, a stew or something. Now, I just want to go back up a second um, before I show you the veggies you can have. So there's the veggie drawer. What I, oh, after about a couple of months I found I was there were getting a bit of mould in the veggie drawer. So, so yeah, veggie, sorry, is short New Zealand word for vegetables. Right, so I had to reset temperature. So you can adjust that. So the top one there is the fridge and the bottom one's the freezer. So obviously you don't want stuff in your veggie drawer 
vegetable drawer at freezing so you might have it too cold or less so just play with it until you get say the right temperature for wherever you live because obviously it will be with some in hot climates some in cold climates and um, so I just stuck it on the mid one mid and um, that seems to work okay so we're lucky to have vegetable markets here Oh, once every Saturday. It's not a farmer's market, it's a, it's a veggie market, so just selling cheap veggies. And um, so I can I only have to go once a fortnight and it stays fresh for that length of time. So just quickly going through, that's the bok choy I was talking about. Now this is now two and a half weeks old, so it's looking a little bit limp. And you will find uh, you need to wash your vegetables because you can get sort of slugs and things crawling out. But I think that's probably a good sign because uh, it means it haven't been sprayed and had all things put on them. So I'll, be, I'll live with that as long as I find them before I cook them. Ha uh ha. -huh. And just leave that there so I can see. Spinach. That's my standu. Now this spinach has been in here. I bought this on Saturday. We're now Tuesday. So that's four days old so that's pretty cool and again that, that goes with anything I love my spinach it's great so I'll put that to one side a minute cabbage now some people don't like cabbage I'm not a huge fan of cabbage but I slice it up I steam it to cook it and then I fry it so I can't say the word ca caramelize it so the sugar tastes come out just like sort of car caramel caramelizing onions so that's that's cool that one broccoli before before I went keto I wouldn't touch this stuff with a barge pole but now I like it so heaven knows what keto does to your taste buds but it must be a plus uh, the blueberry season at the moment so I've got blueberries and I've got blueberries and cream they're nice they're quite carby but I only have oh you know 25 grams per serving it just sort of rounds the meal off quite nicely. Cauliflower. This cauliflower's been in here for about four weeks. So it's beginning to turn a bit, but hey. And the farm's market, or the vegetable market, that cauliflower cost about oh, a couple of bucks, which is brilliant. Now I've got carrots, and again, these are quite carby, so I don't um, put a lot, but it's nice to add them into stew in the stews and stuff like that. Peppers. Green peppers, green peppers, avocados. Yeah. Again, another one I didn't used to eat because, oh, because um, I could never get the farming right. Too hard, too hard, too hard. Oh, damn, pizza. So what I do now, I buy them. I don't care how hard they are, and I buy them. And then I just pop one out in the, on the windowsill, and in two or three days, it's gone soft enough to eat and that sort of rotation works quite well and, and this is more more broccoli and this is again this one's about three weeks old so kept very well in the fridge and here is what I was talking about before the daikon daikon and this has got to be about four weeks old now what's left of it now it's quite long when you buy it um, I suppose the Western equivalent would be um, parsnips, I suppose. I might be wrong there. But it's, I find it's quite versatile. So this can be cubed to go into stews. Um, I can roast it. And then I'll also fry it. So it's a, a chips substitute, which is cool. Now I'll just reassemble the fr fridge again. Almost there, folks. I've just got the freezer to go. Oh, you're still awake. What? Now, so close that door. Oh, we're up to 30 minutes. Bloody hell. I mean, I mean good heavens. Right. So, in the fridge, what goes in the fridge is basically well, stuff that needs freezing. I mean, the freezer. So, yeah, it's a bit obvious. But I'm really trying to say is that if you see something special, grab it. 
and stick it in the freezer. So like chicken thighs. So down from ten bucks to five bucks. So I bought two of these. Now what I do before I freeze it is I wrap it into portions. So I don't have to struggle with, I don't have to unfreeze the whole lot. And uh, it also gives me portion control. So I can weigh it and then, uh, well, the first 12 months I was weighing everything. But now I just um, have an intuitive idea of what I'm eating. So yeah, that's the chicken. What else have we got in here? Now, people don't like organ meat, or oh, sorry, people are not used to organ meat who are younger than I. In the olden days, uh, uh, yeah, organ meat was quite often used. So kidneys, sheep kidneys. Um, that's why I, I put the Tabasco with that, just to sort of lift the flavour a bit. And what I've got? Oh, and bacon. Now bacon can be a bit of a minefield. You really need to check the label to see how much actual meat is in the bacon. Um, now I suppose on this one. I might have cheated a bit because this is a, uh, a one-off purchase of nitrite-free bacon. Because nitrite is pretty awful stuff, but it's every single bacon you find has usually got nitrite in it. Um, and also, uh, but it also hasn't got much of this. This particular one hasn't got as much um, water in it, so it doesn't sort of shrink in the pan. Which is quite cool. And here's the normal bacon. Uh, which is the sort of the standby for sort of bacon and eggs and whatever else you might be making. And the thing that I'd check is again, I say these are individually wrapped in port I've individually wrapped these in portions, check it well. So if you look at the ingredients, shock horror, pork 91%, and that was the highest percentage that I could find. Others were 85, 80. So yeah, just, just check the label before you buy it. And you look at, it's got it's lots of numbers. 451, 450, 500, honey, preservative 250. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so, what? Yeah, okay, so, I like it for its taste. But I wouldn't go too mad with that. Um, I might pick that away. What are we going to next? Uh, Good old mince meat, and the name that's called in the states just escapes me for the moment. Again, a special twelve bucks. Um, ground ground beef, I think it's called in America. Another organ meat I use is beef uh, liver. So I'm just trying out beef liver. I usually have lamb's liver. Um, but the lamb's liver is quite granular, and this beef liver is going to be less granular to the to the taste. So again, that's all sort of split up into meal-sized quantities before freezing it. What else we got? Sausages. Hey, now if you really get keen, it's worth getting a sausage making machine and making sausages because you can get real cheap meats and stuff like that. And mix it. So these are homemade. Um, I can't know what the flavour is of these ones, but there's no preservatives, no fillings, no nasties. This we made, I did this with somebody else, we made um, venison sausages, pork and parlour sausages. Um, oh yeah, we bought half a lamb, that's right, and there's lots of off cuts with it. So the off cuts we used to make um, lamb, that might in fact be what these are, the lamb off cuts. Oh, also this one, my oh, fingers are freezing. Now, also, what we've got here. Oh, look. Oh, yeah, there's the venison sausage. Mm, venison sausage. And they do taste good. Now, it took about three or four goes before we got something that we, we liked. Um, but hey, they, they, they taste really good. Now, oh, yeah, that's the, the um, sausage, the, the sausage skins that we use and if you're going to make sausages it's best to get the natural skins rather than the substitute stuff because it's much easier to work with. We get in there? Yes, yes, I've got one more drawer to go. Wait for it had to do it. Now here we go. So I'll just put those back 
indulge me in a bit. That was easily done, wasn't it? Right. And I open that door. And what we've got here? Oh, okay, so here's the fish stuff. I, I, use, uh, I uh, eat, um, I think, smoked hokey. I think it's a smoked haddock, whatever. That's quite good for, good for breakfast. And again, that's cut into real size portions. Oh, that's what I was going to say about these things. Uh, just to try and keep the freezer cold, I've got these um, bags that freeze up. So, yeah, that keeps the freezer cold. And I haven't got the little gap. Oh, there's the other lot of chicken thighs I bought for five bucks. Um, more, more organ meat. And this is ah, New Zealand beef heart. And again, I'll do a video on how to cook that. But you do that well, like um, venison. When I had venison, it doesn't have too much fat in the meat, so it tends to get to be quite can be quite chewy. So you cook it in a pot roast about two hours, and it melt in the mouth stuff. Uh, also, French prawns. Now they're quite nice for a snack. You can get the big ones. They're even better. Huge. So about four of them. I mean, that's quite. They're quite pricey, but only four of those to make up a meal. And um, if you go to your supermarket and they've got three or four different brands, it's worth trying each brand because there's a huge difference in taste. Behind it is the keto bread that I make. I won't bother unwrapping that. Now that's in the freezer because it contains all sort of stuff that will deteriorate. It's not like um, uh, shop bought. So, and it, it takes it takes about no, it takes about um, three or four weeks to go through that. I don't, I'm not a heavy user of it. Uh, I did buy the home-baked keto bread that's now on the shelves in New Zealand but I worked out the cost of the home-bake is $10 a loaf and what I make uh, is $8 a loaf. It's not a lot different in price but um, I just like the convenience or just like making it my own. And oh now I've got scallops which for two three was a very cheap price in the supermarket so I grabbed it and uh, made some fritters out of it and froze it and here's just a couple of home cooked or home frozen spinach. So I um, used to make a lot of frozen spinach. So there you go, that's the grand tour of a keto kitchen. So that's what my diet has evolved to over the past 18 months. It keeps me going. If you've got if you've given me some ideas of what to do. That's the whole idea of it, and uh, hope that helps. Thanks for watching. At 38 minutes, 24 seconds.